Hello and welcome to Refuse. As always, I'm Plume Noir and this is the Amazing Mary Jane number three. But before I go into this, I do want to show off something that arrived today. Um, literally about 30 minutes ago, I pulled this off my porch. That's right, Jawbreakers, God King, is in the house. Um, as the kids 20 years ago used to say. Uh, so yeah, this did arrive. Um, and uh, yeah, I got the poster with it and everything. It's, it's pretty sizable. Um, I haven't read it yet. All I've done is open the Gemini mailer and taken off the shrink wrap and that's it. Um, I will be checking this out probably not tonight. You know, it's kind of sizable and there's a few videos I want to do tonight. Um, I'm trying to get caught up. As you see, it's a rare daytime video for me. So, um, yeah, I'll probably get to this, I'm guessing, tomorrow night. So, But I just wanted to show off my excitement. Say what you will about your boy, Zach. His uh, Indiegogos have been really good when it comes to fulfillment. So I am very, very excited to uh, finally have this in hand. So I'm just going to put it off to the side here, and we'll take a look at... The Amazing Mary Jane number three. Now, let's see what uh, Big Titty Leah Williams has for us today. Um, you know, the previous issue, I've been enjoying this series. The previous issue, though, was a little heavy on, um, you know, basically how they were going to secure funding. As you know, this series is about Mysterio is pretending that he is a famous uh, uh, movie director also, he could make a Mysterio uh, biopic about himself. And he's cast Mary Jane as his co-lead, and that's when the wackiness happens. Now, this could go, with that premise, it could go really badly or really well, I mean, to be honest. Um, especially given the state of uh, current Marvel. And I have to be honest, Leah Williams has been doing a bang-up job on this book. It's been funny, it's been, you know, enjoyable. Like I said, last issue, I pointed it out. Um, while it didn't bother me, I know some people will be bothered by the fact that the issue just re revolved around how to get funded for the movie. And it's really hard to do an action comic with a non-action person. You know, Mary Jane's awesome. I love Mary Jane. Um, but, you know, you have to admit, you know, her problem solving, you have to kind of work it in in different ways. And I think Leah Williams is doing a good job of that. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Um, yeah, the amazing Mary Jane. Um, the one thing in here says that, uh, uh, do, 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 uh, is making the movie Down in Flames, Up in Smoke, working title. I don't know if that has ever been mentioned in the book. I don't recall it being mentioned. And what the heck are my cats scratching at now? Jeez. <laughs> you see, that's why I don't do videos in the day. They get all wound up and start scratching at stuff. So uh, so let's go ahead and just turn the page now that we know what the movie's working title is. And we start out with a Michael Keaton joke. Um, we see this guy who is, you know, practicing lines. Tombs? There is no one here by that name here. There's only the Birdman. Yeah, you see? It's it's a Michael Keaton joke. Uh, I don't need to explain it. I shouldn't have to, but it's enjoyable. It's fine. Um, nice to start off a joke, um, start off a book with a joke, considering the fact that um, the end of the last issue, the new Savage Six are attacking the set. Uh, I think I stopped before that, so that's where uh, that's where we are. They're looking um, for vengeance, I guess. No, they're looking to attack because uh, uh, Cage McKnight, the supposed director, who they don't know is Mysterio in disguise, um, is using their likenesses in the movie. And so they've all band together and they're going to have words with him. So we get basically the pandemonium that is happening on the set. Um, this dude, who is definitely not Michael Keaton, um, because he's not, uh, we'll find out who he is in a bit. Um, he has to be rescued. Um, there's, there, where's it at? There's a scene here where he is grabbed and pulled into the golf cart. Oh, I looked right at it. Um, 
I kind of bothered me because, you know, hey, Mr. DiPerna, you know, thanks for coming to the set today. Let me give you a quick tour. And then she just grabs him by the arm and yanks him into the golf cart. That is very difficult to do. <laughs> I'm just saying for a normal person to reach across the golf cart to the other side, not even on her left side where she would have the most. She's reaching across and grabbing him by the arm and, you know, yanking him like that. Uh, she would have pulled herself out and uh, whatever. The, the physics of this with someone grabbing someone twice her size, even if they're in a golf cart, would not work. So... Uh, just kind of calling BS on that. But anyway, it makes for a dramatic scene, so I'll allow it. And so while the Savage Six are attacking, um, she's uh, trying to get him away from it. As we see all these people running, which this scene just, I don't know, just kind of makes me laugh. And the typical, boy, the trade rags weren't kidding about Cage committing. These effects are top notch. You know, we're going to find out he's a veteran of the movie industry. He should know that... This is not a set. This is not a movie being played out. There's something going on when he sees something like that. The other thing I'm going to call out on this, and it's at the artist. Do not do this. Don't do this. Bad. See, I want to take this issue and just kind of whap you on the nose. Stop doing these. Where we have the page cut the uh, the art between the two pages, but you have it bleed over. By about an inch. Yeah, because that's an inch right here. Don't ask me why I know my last knuckle, my pinky's an inch. I, I just do, okay? <laughs> anyway, uh, this pisses me off. Don't do this. It's fine like with this panel. Because we're not losing anything. But, when you get this, you just have tarantula. Maybe he's kicking something. Maybe he has gas by the explosion by his ass. I don't know what's going on. And then you have this one panel where the acid from uh, King Cobra is melting a trailer. Now, when you have a panel that is split right down the middle, just vertically down the middle like this, it's hard to tell because you get... There's a word for this. I can't think what it is. It's not the bleed. It's not the gutters. But you, you get this, and it takes a moment before you can realize that this is a trailer. <sighs> I'm sorry, that really pissed me off. It's a bad design choice. There is no reason for this whole thing or to make a separate panel and shrink this a little bit. I know you're going for this, you know, uh, mob parade shot. And it's a good shot. This is a good panel. It should have been a full page. If you're going to do that, make it a splash page. Don't do this cutting. <sighs> I haven't taken my meds yet. Can you tell? Yeah, I haven't taken my meds. <laughs> so, they're still trying to keep up that it's all just a set. Ha, ha, ha. You know, uh, that's, yeah, yep, that's right, Mr. DePerna. Yeah, it's stupid. Um, of course, we have Quentin, you know, Mysterio, who is pretending to be uh, Cage McKnight. Um, he says, I know, gather everyone up in the grip truck and then get out. I'll draw the Savage Six away from you. You can't. You'll be killed. I won't, and it's only me. Well, it's just Cage thereafter. Then he gets pulled out. Now, here's the thing. It's supposed to cause some tension, like Mysterio is doing something, you know, heroic or whatever. And it's nice to see this size of him. The, the side of him, I should say. But we have to remember, he is Mysterio. He could liter literally go up and talk to them and make some type of arrangement to keep the people safe. Because the Savage Six is only here because their likenesses are being used without permission. So she goes and she gets a, a truck here. Um, <laughs> you know, Noah, mind if I drive? See, I love this panel. I, I love these panels. We get to see... God, GR, what are you doing now? He's slapping at the water dish. Um... It's nice to see characters be sexy again. You know, it's 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 really nice. We don't have, you know, boy type number two build for the women anymore. So then we get, you know, basically a, a, a car chase. You know, think of something out of, I don't know, Bullet. You know, um, while she's, it's not quite a car chase, but while she's, while Mary Jane is trying to rescue people um, from the Savage Six's destruction, um... 
you know, she's grabbing people, getting them into the truck, and that's when, you know, Cage does his Mysterio thing. And so, <laughs> Mary Jane goes and gets, opens the back of the truck so she can save this girl whose name I'm forgetting. She's been in all the issues. And, uh, Sunny DePerna, whatever. So that they can drive the golf cart into the back of this truck, which, again, looks cool on paper. Wouldn't really work. Um, have you ever driven a golf cart? Um... A truck going at full speed is going to outpace a golf cart, and so which means this truck has to slow down. Hopefully, they're not going to make any turns because when you get golf carts going fast enough, they tip very easily. Trust me, I know I've driven golf carts, and uh, to get up and whatever with all these people and whatever, you know, it makes for an exciting scene. So, um, Mary Jane sees that uh, um, that Mysterio is doing the Mysterio thing. So they get back into the truck, and they realize who this guy in the car is. Now, we are literally at the halfway po point in the book, I can tell by the staples. And, in fact, this book was actually stapled kind of weird. Oh, no, I take it back. We're one page off of the... The next page was the uh, um, middle, but we're pretty close to the middle. So we get the big surprise of who this guy is. And you're, you're Sonny DiPerna. And everyone is all shocked. Wait, that the old fellow? Like the Sonny DePerna? I loved you in Bad Fellas. Okay, until that line, you know, everyone's shocked. And we're like, okay. Who? Yes, you know, Bad Fellas, Good Fellows. Um, this is supposed to be Ray Liotta. Uh, you'll see that uh, he's constantly pulling out um, lollipops to suck on. Because you probably, you're probably aware. Um, if I remember correctly, Ray Liotta was a chain smoker and he quit. In fact, I think he did, is it Chantex? Is that the the anti-smoking, the quit smoking pill thing? I think he did commercials for that. So, so yeah, this is supposed to be Ray Liotta. So while the Savage Six are having their big attack and Mysterio's gone off to face them, we get Sonny's motivation. Uh, being a legend limited my opportunities. I got bored of the same A-lister, I should say crap, so I retired, but Cage here is willing to let me do something different. He's not afraid of taking ch chances, making the biz feel like a craft again. Okay, we have heard celebrities say this. You know, it's why there are some, you know, big names that will do independent movies. You know, fine, you know, they they get to the top of the game or as far as they're going to get, and so they want to do something different. Um, but his thing down here is you kids have all of Hollywood on edge which must mean you're doing something pretty radical so I'll give it to you straight kids that means they don't want you to succeed a lot of powerful folks out there want this picture to fail okay so you've just broken a major writing rule Leah Williams show don't tell so we have not seen any of this yes we did see the financing problem in the previous issue but one that was after they had problems on the set um you know after you know supposed cage mcknight showed off that he was crazy by attacking another person on the set um this would be called a troubled production i don't think hollywood is really too worried about it especially when you have supposedly this a-list director cage mcknight um I don't think Hollywood is really too worried about this picture, and you know Hollywood does not want it to succeed. We've seen nothing in this issue or the previous two that is showing that off. Um, not Ray, not Ray Liotta is only here to make it seem like, yeah, you guys are the, I, I don't know the 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 Goonies of this. <laughs> you guys are the underdogs and uh whatever movie reference you want to make the sandlot the mighty ducks whatever um you guys are the underdogs and no one wants you to succeed on this movie when if you go by this only a few of the original crew are left um in fact they've even lost the actor who plays mysterio which is causing mysterio to play him you know his own role to portray himself and well, I'm not going to spoil it, but the last page, they lose another person. Another person in the crew quits. 
So, yeah. Um, and I'm not really sure why it looks like Mary Jane, when, when she, when, I forget her name, when she admits that, yes, the Sonny Disperna industry icon, this looks weird. This whole thing just kind of breaks the flow of the previous several pages where we have this big evasion scene and they're trying to get away, trying to rescue everyone from the Savage Six and get everyone to safety. And then everyone just stops when they realize who not Ray Liotta is. And why is she just kind of resting her head like this? You know, it almost looks like she got some bad news and Mary Jane is consoling her. I, I These two pages are kind of weird. They're very out of place. It feels like they should have happened later in the book. Not right now. And it almost looks like the dialogue doesn't match the action. Maybe it's me, but... And then Mysterio goes and he tricks the Savage Six and gets them to wander off. And they end up thinking they're in the desert, but they're not really, so... So Cage McKnight and um, uh, the crew have a new place to set up. Uh, they're going to shoot in an abandoned zoo. They say it's a, an abandoned zoo, but it looks like there's mines. Uh, whatever. This panel here stuck out. You know, you look at the other panels, which look like typical comic. And this looks like trying to um, draw, like from uh from a photograph like this this is one of those times you look and and look at it and say this is a real person this is based off of someone and it that panel really stuck out so they get new crew members and i'm just going to get to that because i don't want to show too much more they get screwball i am still upset with you i hated some of your challenges man that one uh that that, that one challenge that one stealth challenge in the heist I hated that one. I think that was the one, but I'm still mad at you about that. Not Harley Quinn. <laughs> so we got Screwball. Um, yes, I am making a reference to the PlayStation 4 Spider-Man game. Um, we get Herbie, and then we get... Um, yeah, I recognized him, but I couldn't remember. Master Matrix. You know, basically, they are doing uh, sound. Um, they're doing direct new director of photography, new uh, manager. So... Yeah, then we get more trouble on the set, you know, as things are not going their way. So this is a troubled production, at least the movie. This issue, it has some problems. As you saw, I got really upset, but they were more technical things. Um, this is better than the last issue. Um, we do get some action. Uh, again, that not Ray Liotta scene really kind of just snaps you out of it. Um and it almost seems like he's a mouthpiece for Leah Williams. Um, I always have to say her full name. I don't know, just saying Leah or just, you know, Williams, as you should do when you're talking about this. Just use her last name. It never feels right, you know? So that's why I always say her full name. Um, it felt like he was a mouthpiece for the... Um, the current writers, or at least how they feel, that, oh, yeah, well, people don't want this to succeed because they're scared. And I, I, I kind of don't know with Leah anymore. You know, sometimes it, I think she's self-aware. I really do. And I really think she's trying. I think she sees some of the crap that's going on in the industry that everyone pats themselves on the back about. And I think she says, no, I actually have talent. And when she actually uses her talent, she's pretty good. So I enjoyed this issue. Um, like I said, I had a few technical problems, and I felt like some of the pacing was off. But overall, I'm still going with a 1. Still going with a 1 o'clock on this. Um, really hard to believe I've gone 20 minutes on this. Um, it's enjoyable. It's a fun book. I, I, I really think she has a good grasp of the Mary Jane character, which, for some reason... A lot of writers seem to struggle with her. You know, she's not a damsel in distress, but she's not a bitch either. You know, she is. She's she's a tough person, and um, and she's an interesting character. She's not just Spider Man's you know girlfriend slash wife. You know, whatever. Um, you know, she's interesting on her own, and this whole thing about making a movie, which of course you know, 
previously, you know, decades ago at this point, she was a model, and, you know, she did, um, uh, uh, what do you call those, uh, soap operas, um, so it's nice to see her get back into being an actress, so, um, so yeah, I'm enjoying this, overall, the art is good, you know, this panel, uh, the, the, these two pages, they pissed me off, not gonna lie, and yeah, there is some photo tracing, it looks like, but the rest of it, I mean, the book's good. It's enjoyable. So I recommend it. So as always, thanks for watching. I've got a whole bunch of videos I need to catch up on. I will be doing one here in just a little bit. Um, I think I'm going to do a roundup of Fallen Angels 2 and 3. We got the new Dark Knight book. I haven't even looked at that one yet. It's still sitting um, nearby, but Jawbreakers is coming this weekend. So as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And in case you didn't notice, that was JR just sneezing right when I said that. So, cat sneeze, that's how we go out.